Hey everybody, welcome back to Visual Novel Book Club. I'm your pal Sloby. With me, of course, my good friend Rosella. Hello. My good friend Oren Ronan. Good evening. My good friend Jim. Hey everybody. My good friend. The, uh, oh, we got a we got a short cast today. Yeah, uh, we're down to the number of people in a regular podcast. <laughs> I know, serious. <laughs> it's manageable. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, so um, unfortunately, uh, Turbo and Pula could not make it and said to please continue trial without them. So they're having a short recess, you could say. Mm. Um, but we are here. In the fifth and final trial of Great Ace Attorney. Well, you know, that, that, that two games. <laughs> right, yeah, of the first game, more or less. But that said, it's the morning of the trial. Um, Suzato is not here, sadly, and we all know why, and that that's a shame, because I liked her. She has a replacement. She does. And who is it? It's a little 10-year-old girl. Yeah, it's Iris and and her her cat Wagahai or Waggy as she calls him, and her gun, and her gun. Yeah, that's right. She does pull out the the friggin' bazooka at the start of it and points it directly at uh, uh, Nosuke. Yep, because gun, guns are allowed both in the prison and in the courtroom. Yeah. Yep. Does she like the, what is it? Does it do anything, or is it just like a gun gun? As far as we know, I mean, isn't this the 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 magic blood gun? It's either that or it's the the, the smoke grenade launcher. Oh okay. Oh yeah, the one she got back from uh, from Gina, presumably. Maybe she just have another one. That's true. I mean, if you're going to invent one, you're going to make two at least. Yeah, I mean, you got to make a whole arsenal, right, of de- of detective guns. I mean, we we know how Iris works. I'm sure she made a like, you know, smoke bomb gun fabricator <laughs> and just has that somewhere. <laughs> right, exactly. It, uh, one strange thing that happens too at this trial, which kind of threw me, is, um, well, again, uh, she notes that we made the we made the newspapers, right? Which again, that happened before, so whatever, right? Um. But there's, if you look at it, it gets entered in the court record, the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's an article about Great Britain's secret communications being intercepted by hostile entity. And interestingly, examining that, it um, updates the court record. Yep. Yeah. Whenever there's a newspaper in this game, uh, the the article you're giving it for is not the one that's important. It's the one on the other side. Yeah, uh, you know right away. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like literally I didn't even read the first article I immediately flipped it over to be like oh I know there's something below the fold yep. and of course it was there <laughs> so there's a surprising amount of detail for a state for a, um, a thing involving state secrets like oh I guess the news know everything about this <laughs> yeah so we we might have an idea what the, the big case was everyone was, was freaking out about yesterday mm-hmm. oh that's right I forgot all about that yeah Great Empire has a spy problem, apparently. She also mentions, I don't know if this is important, but she mentions that, like, the train that Suzato was going to get on was delayed. Yeah, she, she, she has bad news and good news. The bad news is that there's a storm, car, storm in London right now, and the trains might be delayed and Suzato might not get to Dover in time mm-hmm. um, for getting on a ship. But the good news is that the storm is going to be done by the afternoon, so she probably will get there in time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was just an excuse to hand us the paper. I don't know. I mean, it is possible. It is possible. I don't, you know, that they're setting up some kind of like, I, all right. I mean, I feel like there's probably going to be some final, like, I actually am here. Like Suzata comes back to court for some reason. And maybe this is the setup for that. Yeah. It's what I thought when, as soon as I saw this, I I was thinking the same thing. Like, oh, this is going to be a reason why she's going to pop up right at the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, So uh, I don't. I we don't know if it actually is relevant yet, but that. But I I noted it, so I'm I'm Mm -hmm. letting you know as well. (laughs) You listeners, um, no, yeah. So I think I think that's where we're we're going with that. But um, trial starts, and this interestingly, the judge for once is like Van Zeeks. What the what the hey? Why are you here? You know, like you you know you haven't been in court for a long time. What's going on here? And then. Van Zeeks is like, okay, listen, there's two kinds of people because there's two kinds of people I can't stand. One is people who hide behind their wealth and a mask of philanthropy, but they're actually scoundrels, which 
uh, Iris, you know, goes like, I think she's talking about McGilded <laughs> to a ch- <laughs> uh, Narahodo's like, yeah, I, I, I got that. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he goes, and the other kind of people I can't stand are Japanese people. Yeah. Which is like, whoa. And even even the 19th or whatever, turn of the century judge was like, wow, I didn't think you were just going to say it. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, and Iris is like, I think he's talking about you. And Narahodo's like, yeah, I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. Well, he, he specifically said that the yeah, Japanese people because they betray you, usually. They they pretend to be allies, but are actually tricksters, which is like a big collar pull moment. Yeah. And I thought we were getting along so well. I know. I thought he was going to turn on our side, you know. But anyway, time for the jury. So mostly faces we've seen before. <laughs> All of them, right? No, the the the, the city guy isn't. Okay. He just looks like one of those generic guys. And I have doubts. I, I, I have doubts whether the the um, old man is the same one or his twin brother. <laughs> because. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It doesn't really match what we've seen of him last time. No, no it's, it does not. It's great. I like him. He seems to have a better sense of hearing for one. Mm-hmm. Well, so yeah. So versus Garadeb, he's there and he's like the jury foreman and he's marshalling them like soldiers, which um, you know, matches. Then we get the maid again. Gary Depp keeps keep staring at her. Oh, I didn't notice that actually. Huh. He likes give, giving her like like lecherous little uh, um, glances all the time. Hmm. Huh. I just figured he just feels more natural facing sideways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that's kind of where I was thinking too. I, I I really hadn't noticed, but um. Then we have a nerd. Uh, yeah, I have a I have a big nerd written in my notes actually. Yeah. Yeah, which is just some dude wearing uh like he he's got a little bit of glasses that have that have uh pictures clipped to them. So he's got one picture in front of each eye, which you know helps him see the image stereoscopically. He's yeah. he's a big fan of the the latest craze, yeah. stereoscopy. Mm-hmm. This dude is attached to stereoscopy like he's like the stereoscopy is Elon Musk. Probably invested in technology and doesn't want his money to go away. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, no, this is hundred percent crypto guy, but um, but with stereoscopy. Um, so uh, then yeah, I'm the fourth guy I have that old guy from the first trial, but he's a surgeon, and his gimmick is just kind of like, now I couldn't have left it in him, you know, that would be a problem. <laughs> which you're like, what? All right, that's pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was eating milk duds at the time, so it's possible. <laughs> So he's he's got he's got uh like gloves like surgery scrubs on and gloves and things you know and he's even like he's holding his hands you know up like to not touch anything so that his hands remain sterile it's it's very cute yes it is and then the fifth person they have is that the lady with the type from the typewriter in a previous trial but now she's got a telegraph and I really like yeah she got pro- I think she got promoted between the trials yeah good for her. I really like her, too. With the telegraph, she's very funny because she, like, says everything, like, trial commencing, stop, you know, like, and, and that's her gimmick. But it's, I think it's pretty funny. And it's animated well because she has, like, that vacuum tube thing in front of her. Yeah. Like, every time. So, good stuff, in my opinion. And then um, we have a Russian tourist kind of guy who I'm pretty sure is the revolutionary we were talking about in Chapter 2. Definitely is. Yeah. 100%. That is my favorite callback in, in the entire Phoenix Wright, I think. <laughs> and the first time I saw this, like, six years ago, it was just... <laughs> and he's he's got a mouse for some reason? Just just got a little mouse in his hand that he's just petting. So, that's nice. Maybe he's not such a bad guy. Yeah. And N- N- Naruto is, like, surprised that so many people that he already knows are, are there. And also, someone who is not a citizen, <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like his first quote is like is something like uh he's reading out of a translation booklet and he's just mm-hmm. like I you know I I here's where I need to go next. Um I'm yeah. just a visitor <laughs> to your land. I don't know what I'm doing here. I I'm a tourist. I want take me to the Crystal Tower. Yeah. The Crystal Tower keeps coming up. And Iris is like Iris says like yeah, they're, they're randomly selected from the 6 million people in London. I don't know what to tell you. It's just a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I think at some point, like, Naruto thinks someone is gas- gaslighting him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think he knows something else is going on, because I think he mentions that, like, oh, okay, yeah, random, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Van Zeeks has talked about, uh, you know, like, jury tampering 
as far as like bribery and stuff, uh, I don't know if jury tampering as far as selection is part of the the corruption that Van Zeeks is, is campaigning against. Right, right. But here's some evidence it might be. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of two, Van Zeeks really hits the ground running on this one because uh, he's got a lot um, of evidence, you know, mm-hmm. um, or potential evidence, maybe. Uh, let's see here. So he presents a photo of the scene, of course, you know, which we get in like every trial pretty much. Yeah. Um, we get, uh, what else does he have the autopsy here? Oh, the autopsy. The yeah. autopsy report. Bullet was, came, the bullet, he was shot in the back from a rising diagonal. So someone who was small, uh, shorter than he was. Mm-hmm. Um, the floor plan of the place and a fire and the firearm used to do it entered into evidence, which of course is um, Windebank's firearm, which was only loaded with one bullet. And then when you think that's it, he says, also, we have eyewitnesses. And I rather like the eyewitnesses. Um, oh, they're great. This is yeah. <laughs> the Skulkin brother. Well, the Skulkin brothers, Nash Skulkin, Ringo Skulkin, and Gregson's with them to make sure they don't get out of line. But what's great is they keep identifying him as Big S- S- Big Sulky Skulkin. Yeah. Skulky, yeah. Big bruv Skulky sk- Sulky Skulkin. Sulky. They, they are on a quest looking for the lost, lost older brother. And they think they found him in <laughs> Gregson. Right. And they they look like, um, how do I put it? I guess like stereotypical sort of like British, like 19th century bad guys. You know, they have like, they have little badges that are crosses with a skull on the top part of them. And like, they're, I think their eyes are set up under their cap. So they're supposed to be kind of like that raccoon mask kind of thing, you know? They are also Mario and Luigi. Uh, 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 oh. How about that? Yep, that's okay. Yeah, you're right. One's tall and you know, the, yeah, yeah. One's, um, one's tall and green and one short and red. Yeah. Yep. No, you're right. Actually, yeah, I didn't even think of that. So the they're they're very desaturated compared to Mario and Luigi. I feel like that that means something. I can't Ringo and Nash. I can't figure out if that's like a joke of any kind or anything. Ringo and Nash are not the names in Japanese, but they are Japanese references because Ringo is apple and Nash is Nash is pear. And the foods associated with them. Okay, so I knew, I knew Nashi was pear, but I I thought apple was just like, I don't know, I I didn't I don't know how else to say apple. Oh, that's right, Ringo is apple, yeah. Huh. Yeah, it, I didn't it, learn enough fruits. It's just the words in Japanese for pear and, and apple. Uh, they're not named this in Japanese, by the way. What are they named in Japanese? So the, the last name is uh, Team Pillar. Which is uh, a pan on uh, chimpira, which is like a hoodlum or uh, like a minor um, criminal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first names are Nemi and what is the other one? I don't remember. I don't really get them. Um, I, I read what the Ace Attorney Wiki says they are pans off, but I'm not sure that I agree. Uh, I, I have to look into this. Okay. It's like Nemi and, and Lemmy or something to that effect. One of them is Nemi for sure. I'm not sure what the other one is. It's really Lemmy or... I can look it up. Well, I, I like them. And, um, you know, they have that kind of, like, voice to them. Like that, sure is governor kind of shit, you know. But, like, they're talking about... Um, that was my British accent, by the way, if anybody can tell. So, uh, no, that, like, kind of... Again, that, like, sort of, you know... Uh, blimey, we nicked it, kind of, whatever you'd call that, like, sort of criminal, like, I can't think of, like, if there's, like, a, a term for it or what, but just, like, it seems like like that kind of thing you've seen in a movie or something before, you know? I mean, if, if you thought Gino was Cockney, I think these two are, are like, they're, like, double Cockney. I know. Yeah, it's, like, it's that, that comical, like, you know, very sort of, you know, overdone stage kind of Cockney accent. You know? I think they kind of took it too far this time, because uh, it was to the extent that sometimes I had trouble understanding what they were actually saying, like in important mm. parts of the testimony. The only they do one co- almost it's not re- true. I guess really Cockney rhyming slang because the rhyme is there where they said like they got a, their hands in this lady lockets, meaning their pockets. But again, you're not supposed to know what the rhyme is right away, so. I, I think that's probably just for the, the benefit of the people at home, so you don't actually have to, you know. But 
Um, that having been said, their setup is they were there at Windebanks to rob it, but happened upon a murder, which is like ne- always like the worst luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. So basically, um, they saw her hold the gun. I think they saw. Well, they, they didn't get into that yet, but basically, they're like, yeah, yeah, no, no, she she shot him. We know Gina shot him. I, I think their testimony was something like, uh, we walked in, we heard a gunshot, we instinctively knew it was a murder, and we immediately left without looking or touching at anything. Right. Looking at or touching anything. Yeah. And Narahoto's like, you're full of it. And then you're like, why? He goes, because you shot Sherlock Holmes as you were leaving. <laughs> yeah. You know, I saw you do that, and he is shot, ergo, you know. Um, and in fact, you know, uh, uh, I think Zeke's does this, right? Like, their guns entered into evidence. Theirs, I mean. Yeah. A different gun. It was also only shot once. Yeah. And we need to show proof that they actually fired it. So here's where we start in on our blood samples. And we're like, look, see, there's a there's a calendar. It's ripped. There's a bullet in it. There's blood. And it's green. So we know it doesn't belong to Windebank or... No, we don't say that quite yet but mason is the only other person we know but yeah mason that's right yeah at this point we just show that there's a bullet on in on the scene like in the main part of the store and the, ca- the calendar says april 16th so we know yeah. that this was part of the incident yeah and just the fact that like van zeke concedes that like sure he, they could have done this they could have shot Sherlock Holmes, but there's only one gun there's only one bullet missing so no matter what crimes they committed in the outside room there's no connection to them committing the murder in the in the store uh, storage room Right, because the storage room is locked, and there was only, like, Gina and Windebank in it, so... Yep. It's, like, locked from the inside. I think here the jury decides that we're... that, um... It's a guilty verdict? Well, no, the first there's the camera. The, um... Yeah, because... Yeah, there's the... 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 The, 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 the automatic camera that Jones uh, put in there. Uh, we have a, a picture at 1 a.m. of Gina, um... With a, with a gun pointed at the ceiling. And uh, Mr. Windebank on the other side of the counter, counter facing towards her. Uh, and that's when the jurors are like, oh, yeah, guilty. <laughs> she's She's got her finger on the trigger. It is it is a it's bad for our case. <laughs> it's so damning. You're just like, I don't know why Zeke didn't just present that and call it a day, yeah. you know, yeah. like, but he doesn't for whatever reason. <gasps> also, also, when he's presenting it, he shows this like stack of photographs that's like a foot and a half tall. <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, no, yeah, it's just it was just identical photos every 30 minutes for hours and hours and hours. <sighs> so, of course, they uh, they all announce guilty, and of course, we submit them to summation examination. Um, and our first in road, of course, is that so the main is main's whole deal is like she's basically like pickpockets and like criminals that like are you know the worst kind of people. So of course she did it, that kind of thing. Um, of course you know, uh, Gina did it, but we kind of if we press her testimony, we get an in road by saying like, well, actually you know the brothers shot home like they were the birdors. She's like, okay, fine. And then the the Russian guy is like, well, obviously the brothers are incident, so we can pit them against each other. And uh, that doesn't get them to change their verdict, but it does get um, forget exactly how. But I think like we were sort of proving like, well, how do we know that the brothers didn't come after? And Von Zeke's is like, well, here's a, we, should, we get the picture at one thirty where nobody's in it. You yeah, because we, we're proving it's like, oh, well, OK, the brothers lied. But they, they just forgot that they shot someone, you know, easy, yeah. easy mistake to make. But the rest of their testimony has to be sure. Like they didn't steal anything. Right. And so right. we get a photo at one thirty to figure out of like, hey, uh, what, like, you know, could we, let's compare the photo at one o'clock when the murder happened, or when we saw Gina with a gun, and the photo at one thirty to see like, oh, is anything missing? Is anything, you know, out of place? To see if they actually stole anything. Right. And it doesn't look like there's anything really out of place. Mm-hmm. There's a lamp broken, but nothing's missing. Apparently. This is the first time we actually hear hear more from Villain speaking, the Russian guy, and yes. they give him like more a more like Russian speech patterns than they did for the dancer in the second chapter. But the one way they indicate his accent is changing his V's into W's. Uh, is this something you associate with a Russian accent? 
Actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, is it? It's, it can be. It depends on the person. Yeah, I, I've met people who do that, like, in, in IT and stuff, you know? I, I kind of, like, thought it was the other way, that they change W's into V's more often than not. Like, like water? Well, I think that's more of a German thing. Yeah. Like, if you mm. say, like, give me a drink of water. But I've, I've met, like, I have met, like, Russian people who are like, I'll take a glass of vodka or something, yeah. you know? So, like, um... Hmm. Yeah, I, and yeah, like um, uh, it's it's a thing. It's not always like I've met Russian people who certainly don't do that. But yeah, that's that's uh, I've seen that. Um, I mean, I know I know what's actually happening because I did study phonology uh, university. Um, well, I mean, I've met people. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I didn't get a degree in friggin' <laughs> like every fucking language like you have. But okay, like I met a guy. <laughs> it's a similar thing to the Japanese R and L stuff. It's like they actually have something in between V and W. Let's say, say. Mm-hmm. and whether you hear it more, more more like a V or more like a W is kind of like depending on. I say on your brain at the moment or the surrounding uh, consonant. Yeah, and I would say that it's it's a it's not always used for Russian for to, to to portray a Russian Russian accent. I'd say occasionally you'll get a character who will do the WV thing, um, but I, I also you'll do you'll you'll see characters with Russian accents that don't even do come close to it. Like it's not it's not like um, automatic. Like the I think a lot of times certainly in the past the the R and L thing um, was mm-hmm. was used like all the time, but the, the W and the V. It's just sort of like every so often you'll get a character like that, I guess, maybe to, to portray a certain region of Russia or a certain kind of Russian character. Yeah, it was just weird for me for some reason, because it's not... I, I wouldn't think to portray mm-hmm. like Russian um, accent this way. You know, it's an interesting thing I was reading, by the way, which is like sort of related to this, is um, the fan translation for this game. I've heard it's pretty good, you know, like in general. But um, I've also heard that, like, interestingly, while most people kind of think that this is better, the official one... You know, um, uh, the, apparently the fan translation did the Russian characters in this game really well. Like, they apparently consulted with a lot of Russian people and added, like, a lot of interesting, like, idioms and stuff. And, like, even hmm. if you don't know Russian and stuff, apparently, like, that's sold very well here in uh, in Great Ace Attorney, the fan translation. Hmm. But how about, the, so how about that? Um, but at any rate, um, but back to the official game, which we're playing, um... So we do also get another like pit kind of argument, but it doesn't seem super relevant where basically st- the stereoscope guy is like, you know, stereoscopy is the future, which I don't even know how he works into his like summation <laughs> thing, but he does. And uh, we get another one. And then the telegraph lady is like, no, telegraph is the, the future. The stereo stereoscopy stuff is just a stupid fad. So we get them to argue and basically, to prove that, that, that stereoscopy is worthwhile, he asks, like, do you have two photos that are very close? And thankfully, we do. We sort of. We have the picture at 1 a.m. and 1.30. Now, this is... And then we get also another tutorial again on how stereoscopy works, in case you forgot. But, um... Interestingly, too, like, I was kind of like, I don't get where this is going, because technically, like, these are not stereosc- stereos- stereos- stereoscopic... Stereoscopic. Stereos- Thank you images but the trick is of course if you have two images that are very close to each other like those photo hunt kind of pictures you know you can actually see the differences between them with stereoscopy which i didn't realize and i kind of want to do now but um so we compare these two pictures and we actually find out that the desk uh, did anybody actually try this by the way with like the whole like cross your eyes things? Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah, so th- they do this thing here where um, they uh, tell you first to cross your eyes and try to see the two pictures side by side uh, mm-hmm. and then Iris asks you if you could see it or not and if you tell her that you can't see it then she takes out the um, like mobile um, device and shows it and shows you the picture to that. And this is, of course, when on the 3DS version, if you couldn't see it by, by yourself, you're, you're, you're told to turn on the three slider, uh, mm-hmm. which is like the, the device that Iris has. Um, in this game, of course, you don't have 3D, so instead they blur the, the, the rest of the picture and just um, show you what changed. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's kind of awkward. They could have removed like the iris part. Yeah. But yeah, they they don't make you point out the actual like the interesting part of it. 
they just right. kind of they just ask you is like did you see did you did you catch that and you're like yes and it's like exactly the the <laughs> items in the back yeah. of the desk are are popping out in 3D which means they must have shifted very very slightly because that's what makes the 3D effect yeah also the lamp's broken that's also true I was so annoyed, though, because maybe this comes up later in the trial, but, like, nobody points that out. And I'm, like, sitting there, like, the lamp, the lamp. Yeah. Like, when are we getting to the, you know, but. Yeah, that is that is immediately apparent, even if you are not doing any stereoscopic wizardry. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, the, the, the lamp is broken. So, did anyone notice the other thing that changed between two pictures? Because I believe I did when I first played this game. If you didn't, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but. I'm going to say I did not. I did not, so... There's, there's, one, there's one more detail that changed between the two pictures, and it's very subtle. Um, but I think that when I first played this game, I noticed it at this point of time. Because I was looking at it very carefully. No, I... Um, no, I didn't. I just... Uh, I, for, so this one I did not see. We have to do this once again, I'll spoil, but... Um, you know, and I did see it the second time when we have to, but not, not this time. Um... But anyway, yeah, it seems like all the stuff on the desk is shifted around somehow, so it kind of calls into the question, like, well, obviously they couldn't have just, like, left immediately. Like, they must have moved stuff around on the desk, so what the hell's going on here, you know? Yeah. Um, and also, so basically, we convinced the lady to buy a stereoscope after all, that maybe telegraphs, I think, are great, and it turns out she is right, but she's convinced for the moment. Um, and yeah, so basically... Uh, the ju- and the jury is back on our side now. They four of them vote not guilty. I think Garadeb is the holdout, and well, I forget one other, but uh, whatever. Anyway, I think it's the the surgeon is is just too busy not paying attention to us, right? Because he's like, I could swear I didn't leave it in him, that kind of thing. Right, that, that's that's also where we learned that he thinks he might have left a scalpel inside a patient's body. It's like if if I left it, like things would have gone wrong by now, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He also says that the surgeons are in doctors in, in Britain at that point of time. Is that true? I want to say yes. I want to say like that there was a dividing line between like surgeons were more like butchers. Yeah. I, I, well, I think uh, barbers actually. Yeah, barbers. Yeah. It was like, yeah, like, you know, barber has got a straight razor and they shave your face. And maybe if if something goes wrong, they'll cut you open. And like that's so that that was the, the like the similar uh, professions. <laughs> Medicine, something totally different. Yeah, but, hair, guts, all the same. Yeah, like a doctor would diagnose you, but a surgeon would cut you open. <laughs> well, that's still kind of true, right? I mean, like the you know the the, the surgeons are like kind of like huge specialists, you know. Yeah, but I guess they they probably identify you too. By the way, you should see me stream Life or Death sometimes on Twitch TV. <laughs> anyway, but um, uh, it's an old PC surgery. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, so um, basically. The brothers now amend their testimony a bit because we kind of realized they must have been lying. They're like, okay, 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 listen. The gunshot scared us, so we knocked stuff over on the table so to kind of dis- to hide the fact that we were there, we actually um, tidied up a bit. Um, so this at this point, too, Gre- like Gregson kind of was like, huh? When they're explaining that, and we pursue that, and he says, well, actually, when we questioned you, the first thing you said was that you heard someone say, give me that gun. So now they amend their testimony like, oh, you're right. You're right. You know what happened? We came in and we saw Windebank holding a gun at um, to uh, uh, Gina. At this point, they still maintained that they never saw him, that they heard it all like through the door. Well, they they insist that he was holding a gun. They they never saw him, but they know he was holding a gun. Yeah, because that's how you get him, because it's like, well, that can't be true because we have a photograph of Gina holding the gun, you know? Yeah, I think I think at this point, what they say that they hear him say something like, "Hand me the gun, or, I'm, or, or I'll shoot you," and that's why they know that he had a gun. Yeah, yeah, he did. Say, they said he said something like that. I have a quote here in my court record that says it's "Give me that gun." Yeah, but they said they heard like both things: "Give me that gun, or, or I'm going to shoot you." Something yeah. to the effect. Well, at any rate, they act it out, which is pretty funny, you know, because yeah. they like kind of do that, and then. And then pretty pretty smartly, Naruhoto is like, hold on a second, right there, don't move. Like, sh- sh- keep that position. Because the problem with your testimony is if they were, if you got, because they're facing each other yes. with this sort of like stick them up kind of thing. So he's like, no, 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 
Coroner's report says shot in the back, rising angle. So that can't be it. And they they're like, they still swear, though, that like they're like, no, he was holding the gun. And they're like, well, the only yeah, you're right, because now it's like, well, the only way we could know that you could know that is if you'd actually seen him holding the gun. So they must have encountered him in person. So now they start saying, like, we can't keep talking about this. He'll have our guts out. So they're like, you know, it's like, well, who are you talking about? So they're worried about somebody who's going to have their guts out or <laughs> and other things. This this section is, I think, like Oren was po- pointing out, it, it gets a little confusing at, at what they're saying and like who the object of stuff is here. Um, yeah. Because and, and some of that is the accent itself and the way the accent is. It just it's all ease like hey, check me over the counter and all that stuff. Like it's all like, you know, I'm not sure who the E is. It's used so often. Yeah. Like the like we and he both like theoretically can be abbreviated like with the you know, apostrophe E. But yeah, I, I I had to just keep in mind like you I basically I had to say it out loud. And it's like you you truncate H's in a, right. a lot of a lot of British accents, actually. So, like, if you you wouldn't truncate a W, but yeah, it, it is confusing when you're reading it. You wouldn't truncate a W. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, um, let's see here. No, that, yeah. So, I I mean, I think was, this is one of those like kind of Phoenix Wrightish, ridiculous kind of things where it's like the the judge Zeke's us. We're all like, you have to stop committing perjury, <laughs> and the judge is like, okay. Now I want you to fix your testimony again. And it's like, hey, how about they're not good witnesses and we should throw them out entirely? You know what I mean? Like, this is one of those like, all right, knock it. Like, this doesn't work really. But, yeah, you know, it's a video game and et cetera. So, yeah, what like the second time they they the first time they correct themselves, it's called like the whole truth. And then they have to correct themselves again after they've told the whole truth. And, and it's not subtle either. It's it's the just entire story is completely different. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh yeah, we, we forgot that one thing. We did hear something. But it's because uh, I think at this point is where they actually say, like, okay, he ran out of the room and holding a gun. That's when we saw with with a gun, and that's when we saw him holding it. And then he like knocked us over the desk, which is why the desk was all got moved. And then ran back into the room, and then we tidied up the desk, and then left. I think is their testimony at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let's be honest, they should have just thrown them off the sand and just completely struck on the record. Like, there's no, yeah. even for a bias trial, it's guys who were definitely committing a crime when they were caught and when they were a witness, and then they changed their story three times on the stand. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah, like, this is, we gotta do a different conspiracy here. Like, let's, let's, we gotta get another Patsy. We have to start over at this point <laughs> with whatever, whatever it is we're trying to cover up. It's not happening. <laughs> um, so, uh, it seems like this is going great. Oh, yeah, so, um... Yeah, that's right. They say he held them up, threw them over the counter, and then the other one pulled out his, um, he pulled out his gun and ran to the vault. And that's when we're like, well, there you have it. What happened, of course, was, in fact, that um, you pulled out the gun, shot at him, and he was running away from you, and um, he ran, or no, he ran, he pulled the gun and he ran to the vault. And that's why it was an upward trajectory is because he was, he was running, so he was like at full tilt. Yeah, and it and it's like and it's, and then Von Zeeks is like, okay, that's cute and all, but I got some bad news for you. Um, none of that holds up to scrutiny because again, Gina is in a locked room with him. So explain that, which is like that's actually quite easy. He was shot from outside the vault. He Gina's already in the vault. He runs in after being shot, and she's worried about also being shot. <laughs> locks her the door so that the, the attacker can't get in. Which is like, that is actually completely plausible. Because for a long time, I was like, kind of like, well, how are they going to explain that? You know, like, how could that be? And I'm like, that works. Totally. Yeah. Uh, trial over, right? It, it even makes sense that she's going to take the gun and, like, try to defend herself after that. Yeah. That's why she yeah. had it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, the, the thing that I kept trying to insist to the game, uh, it, it wasn't listening, was that like I thought there was a like a viewing hole in the door to the storeroom? I thought when we we investigated, yeah. we saw that. Yeah, there one hundred percent is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's that's how we first see it is because um, as as soon as like after the confusion, that's like oh my god, what happened? And then opens the the view thing and looks inside. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. So like we're doing all this talking about it's like it's like how could he possibly have been shot through this closed door? It's like it has a it has a it has a thing in it. Like, yeah. It has a hole. I mean, granted, the hole is uh, roughly, you know, eye level, which so it'd be really hard to get an upward trajectory on the gun. Uh, unless, like, unless he was already lying down on the ground. We're standing on a box to get something off a shelf, or... It's possible, you know, yeah, you you're, you know. It's true. But yeah, but the, the point is, is I, I really wanted to insist, like, no, there's, there's a hole in the door, uh, but the game would not let me say that. It was just, no, he got shot, and then closed the door, and then Gina locked it. And mm-hmm. well, that's that's fine too. Yeah, I guess the only thing there is that at this point in the trial, they're just going off the idea that the gun that killed him is his gun, which was in there. Maybe the yeah. viewing window isn't big enough to get his gun in. That's that is the tricky part. Is how do you then how do you get Gina? How do you get the gun in there with Gina? Right, you know, holding it. I think too, like Von Zeeks is still like, well, this is still great, but you still haven't explained. There's two guns, two bullets. There's no third bullet anywhere, right? And um, the jury is like, ah, he almost got us. That's a good trick. Yeah, we're going to vote guilty again, right? Is that how this goes? I think actually, no, I'm missing a part with the disc gets introduced. Um, yeah. Yeah, Zeke's, yeah, Zeke's introduces the disc with the blood stain on it. And this time, now that we've gotten it, because before Gregson had it and we had the copy, you know, but it gets introduced in evidence. But interestingly... He's trying to establish that Gina is actually a bad person. Right, yeah. He brings up the cheetah pickpocket and and she also tried to steal this disc but you know what's interesting too is gregson kind of says like um i had a deal with the prosecutor's prosecutor's office that we weren't gonna enter that into evidence and zeke's like i don't know about that you know like anyway it's like i appreciate you thank you for letting me know i'm submitting this into evidence yeah yeah and, and like clearly this is gregson acting on behalf of the government like the government does not want yeah. this introduced to evidence anywhere which I guess to me says that there clearly must that like this is where the state secrets have to be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like I've been I've been trying to figure out how these two things how these two cases link. And it's like, oh yeah, no. Like somehow mm-hmm. there are state secrets on this music disc. I I do not know in what way the data is encoded, but that has to be the case. Well, Morris is coming up a whole lot in this case, so and Morris is, will be fairly easy to encode. Uh, in like- That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm. So anyway, um, the jury says guilty again, and uh, we have summation examination. But again, we just we check the b- d- blood on the disc, and it's green. Which what does blood green match again? Green matches the uh, the blood on the calendar. Yeah, and and we do know where the blood on the disc came from. Right, we were there. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That- yeah. Yeah. So. Basically, uh, the we found we find out the old man who is a surgeon actually performed surgery because he says on Sherlock Holmes to extract the bullet, which is like what? And um, he's like, you know, that there's no way. Like for some reason, you know, he shot. He got shot in the in the abdomen. There was no exit wound in the back, but the bullet's not there. I can't figure it out. That is one magic bullet. Um. Which uh, no one will get, but was a reference to a movie with called JFK, and it was like a big thing called the Magic Bullet that everybody knew about, and it was very funny. So just laugh as you're <laughs> listening to the podcast. Um, so but the Russian guy, when we put them against each other, because the Russian guy just kind of is like, I can explain anything about bullets, which again is like that's not totally relevant, I guess, but sort of. But I'll take it. I just love after after you press the surgeon, he's just like, if only there were someone who could tell me everything about bullets. Yeah, and then the, the Russian guy's like, well, I can, you know, and he's like, this kind of happened to me. I was being chased by people with rifles, and they shot at me, and I wasn't hit, but the ice wall next to me was, and what happened was the ice, uh, like, the ice shrapnel actually got me, and the ice was in my body, but it melted, so it was kind of like it disappeared, you know, and that's what happened to me, and, you know, um... That explains that. So it's like great, but there's no ice in the the um, pawnbroker shop. So explain that. And um, we can't explain that except to say like, well, you know, it might have been somehow that like the bullets didn't sh- 
like the bullet struck Holmes's pouch of dangerous chemicals, which I was, which I thought was going to be a thing that's like, oh God, he's going to die. But thankfully, we got this information. Iris actually comes up with that idea uh, when yep. she hears the yeah. story. She says, "Oh, Holmes says, uh, Sharon says this like pouch that he always wears." Mm-hmm. Rianoske also has a really cute line when he, uh, when he like he does the the pit like mechanic. He's like, those two statements clearly contradict the idea that all I do is pit jurors against each other because he's, he's matching <laughs> That's them up, right, yeah. you know? This is, that is good. This is mutually beneficial. This is a localization invention, by the way. This, this doesn't say that in Japanese. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so Zeke's... Pres- oh, Zeke's is like, you know, I'm not supposed to interrupt the summation examination, but... Just so you know, I have Holmes Sholmes's pouch right here, and it's not been disturbed. Which I kind of felt like was him doing that, like, sort of, wait, you're on to something truthful, I'm actually going to help you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But when we examine it, we discover that, yes, one of the vials is shattered, and if you open the snap part of the pouch that's on top of it, the bullet is still there in the pouch, and he seems, like, physically, like... Do that, like, you know, the prosecutor gets hurt kind of animation sort of thing they do, like you're having a battle. He, he kind of motions like he just got shot in the shoulder. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. So I think he, he is actually unhappy with this, right? Oh, but, yeah. But also, I I still feel like we're we're still, I, I still feel like we're on the same side. Like, we're still searching for the truth. It's like, hey, this, this yeah. piece of evidence has become relevant. And I, I don't think he knew the significance of it or how devastating it would be to his case or beneficial to ours rather right. but I still feel like he presented it in good faith which is why I'm so confused that he's got this whole racism thing going on I really thought we were getting on Yeah, I think I feel like part of it might just be that this is like a turn of the century kind of thing and it's going to be like alright you've shown me the error of my ways you actually are a good learned that's another thing too they have a nice verbal tete-a-tete with the like my learned friend here meaning Naruhodo and von zeke's keep like referring to each other that way mm-hmm. and i really I, I do enjoy that i think that's fun it's very cute yeah but um what happens next so um oh yeah uh basically um we say uh so they're like okay there's a third bullet so you're committing a third gun so what the hell is going on here and you have to do like the wackiest choice, which is I think there's a secret accomplice that the Skulkin brothers had, a third person. Yeah, so at, at this point, we, we present the third bullet because the maid, I think, uh, yeah. says that uh, if there were more than th- some, sometimes things disappear from the scene. Um, yeah. Uh, and if we could show her a third bullet, then she would be, she, she'd consider changing her mind. And the evidence is literally called the third bullet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when we show the third bullet, the judge decided decides that this is important enough to um, suspend the uh, jury examination um, and try to figure out what's actually going on because this completely changes the picture and the entire argument from the prosecution. Right. So there's that. Now, um, so they, they they call back um, the um, the brothers, the, right? The Skulking brothers to the stand. Yeah, and they refuse to talk. Right. And basically, this is where we kind of sit. They're like, OK, well, then you explain what happened. He goes, I think there's a secret accomplice. So Zeke's is finally like kind of fed up with this shit. And he's like, OK, you know what? There's a secret accomplice. Here's what I want you to do. P- tell me who they are and p- will prove to me that there is one and tell me who they are. Also with proof. And <laughs> what I and Naruto is like, you got it. So um, again, we do, I think, the blood sample. Right. Mm-hmm. And the. um. And uh, we do the blood sample and we figure out that, that in fact, there is an accomplice from that. And that accomplice is, in fact, Eggert Benedict from earlier in the chapter, the, the gentleman with the hat. Right. Because we have his blood from when it was when it nicked when um, on the, on the, oh, on the music right, box yeah. disc. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, OK, great. Can we summon him? And they're like, well, not really. We don't know who he really is. That's like an alias, you know. In fact, the judge is even like Edgar Benedict's a fake name. Be- before that, um, Vix won't have that because we're using a strange uh, blood gun oh, yeah. that a detective invented. Just invented, yeah. This this thrilled me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like this a lot, actually. Yeah. 
Because Zeke's is like, yeah, Zeke's is like, look, I'm sorry. No, we cannot accept that as evidence. Like, what you have this, you have this magic gun that you happen to invent that happens to show you exactly whose blood matches what. That's bullshit. You're making it up. That is not admissible in court. Yeah, the detective from the stories for the for the masses invented. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. That the the, the, the uh, fictional detective is not really fictional. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good thing, honestly. And like, I'm 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 I was really kind of like interested to to do it then because now you have to kind of do it without, of course, you know. Yeah, but how how they solve it? Is Iris points out that um, that's all true, but. We're still technically in the middle of the jury examination, and they are—they have to decide. It's not—it's not up to Van Zix. And and you understand why Van Zix could be angry about this stuff because it's just to him this could just be a trick to convince these jurors, and that's what that absolutely drives him nuts. At, at this point, he does say that well, these jurors are, are stupid, and we should get uh, smarter ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It just it is it was another instance of the game being surprisingly realistic. Like if someone just got shot in front of you, you would probably lock the door. Just like, oh yeah, no, that that is what a reasonable human would do in this situation, which is just not how video games usually work. No. And then the the jury who are actually fans of Sherlock Holmes because he's a very popular character, they decide mm-hmm. most of them decide that they want to hear more. But, and by the way, the the surgeon, since you know he's he's all scrubbed in, so he can't use his hands. He just headbutts the oh yeah the button. That uh, was great, which is really excellent. Yes, and 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 then they the, the judge says that they can't summon Egbert Benedict because this is obviously a fake name, and they have no way to know who it is. <sighs> we supposed to know it was obviously a fake name this is an ace attorney game <laughs> I know, <laughs> <right>? no difference. <laughs> uh, but then someone uh, chimes up uh, the telegraph lady is like I work with that guy in the telegraph office I know who that is it doesn't tell us his name man. yeah because they, they have a photo and another photo from the uh, camera from earlier in the day oh yeah yeah that shows him that's right from the huge stack of photos that Van Zick said mm-hmm and apparently he's he's at work right now. She's like, oh, he's he, you know, he's gonna be there right now. You can just go get him. Yep. So that's uh, what we do. But it'll take like an hour for him to actually show up. So uh, that pretty much brings us to the end of that chapter. I think, right? Yeah. Where the yeah. end of the reading, I should say, not really the chapter, of course. But so that is the 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 second the part two of the trial. This is going to be what a four part trial. Yeah. yeah, and 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 this is like an actual intermission in the, both the trial and the, and a break for for where we are. Yeah, yep. So you get a little a little taste of trial. Yeah, exactly. What do you think so far of trial? I mean, the first thing I think is I wonder what crimes this communications officer is uh, is committing when we have you know mm-hmm. this whole deal with state secrets being leaked. It's, mm. it's highly plausible that this man might be involved. I actually didn't make that connection till now. You're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the- and the fact that we know that the music box, even when Holmes tried to play the disc, just made gibberish, you know, like mm-hmm. didn't make it any coherent music. So the idea that there's just a code in this thing is really obvious. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was the biggest thing that that stuck out to me. And you've got this this the foreign uh revolutionary who's now on the jury trial stand and he's got to be involved in some way (laughs) i am yeah i mean so um i can't figure out how you know i mean so mcgill did have this disc initially right in theory yeah yeah well the the the, the man he killed had this disc oh mason yeah mason it, it fell out of mason's pocket according to gina yeah. Mm. So my theory would be that they're involved. Right, Mace- Mason had a disc and it had this post-it note on it says for McGilded. Yeah. Mm. So I would assume that so they're, they're intercepting these state secrets. What do you do with state secrets if you're just a criminal? You auction them off to the highest bidder. Right? So he's probably trying to do a transaction but also he doesn't want to leave anyone uh, either there's a double cross going on and he's getting the disc back from thrice fired Mason or 
it's just you know he's just that's just a del- the guy who's doing the the handoff and he doesn't want to leave any witnesses or he's like you put my name on the disc yeah. and then he gets so mad and kills him well how was i supposed to remember it's for you don't put it on my name on it and he kills him. Yeah. well th- the other thing and this is uh this is not my information uh because i don't know anything about sherlock holmes but uh we one of the things that we learn um like just at the very beginning, when we're like, I think it's before we even go in court, is we get a uh, thrice fired Mason's last name, and uh, I I don't remember what it is, but it's it's it is a, it's significant in in Holmes lore as like uh like almost like second to Moriarty in like uh being like a corrupt j- jerk who bad, uses money to guy. hide like to like extort people, um. Hmm. And I, I forget what it is because I don't know anything about Sherlock Holmes and I didn't write it down. I don't remember that we learned that. Why, why do we? We absolutely did. It was it was right at the very beginning. I don't know if maybe it was a uh, maybe like it was in the profile. If Mason was was in the profiles list, it might be in the profile. No, it was in the notes because um, Suzato gave us no. Yeah, Suzato gave Suzato gave us her notes. Uh, that I think had on the McGilda trial, and I think that had Thrice Fired Mason's last name. Oh, it does. It's Mason Milverden. There we go. Okay. Hmm. I didn't I didn't even look at her notes. Good one. So, uh, ex- always examine all evidence the second it's added to the court yeah. record. <laughs> so, yeah, that's meaningful from, from a Sherlock Holmes perspective, and I, I wish I wish I knew more. <laughs> I wish I knew enough to, to speak to this, uh, intelligently instead of just secondhand but that could imply that he is up to is up to no good there is one more interesting thing that uh, we didn't mention uh is that iris is convinced that Sholmes is still uh asleep even though we know he isn't because we saw him in the last cutscene uh, mm-hmm. last time um and she says that gregson promised her that he will inform her the moment he's awake and apparently he didn't if that's true, yeah, because we saw him say goodbye to Suzato. Yeah, yeah, but Iris doesn't know that. Um, so either Gregson doesn't know it either, or Gregson does know, but he didn't tell Iris for some reason. What a dick. No, um... Here. Okay, I just Googled it real fast. Yes, I do remember Milverton now, so, um... Hmm. Maybe it'll come up, maybe it won't. Uh, Milverton is a expert blackmailer. That's what he does. He is like, you know, like He's really good at blackmail, really good at blackmail, like somebody who like sort of gets <laughs> dirt on rich people and then blackmails them. Is blackmailing like such a huge skill? I mean, I guess it is. I mean, it's really just being a spy, right? Yeah, like, it's really yeah. just getting information that is worth money and then, you know, getting people to give you money to, you know, to, to pay you to keep it quiet. You know, I think it would be a skill because, you know, you, you're probably not going to get. You you don't have to just give it up to him right away. You kind of bleed him for a bit, right? So you get the maximum amount. <laughs> it's like there's, he leaves no blackmail money on the ta- blackmail table. Yeah, I think you are really good at blackmail, Melverson. Oh, okay. So interesting. Form a gilded. Yeah. Okay. I can't think of anything though. It, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to follow at any rate, or at least right not right away that like. Mason would like have dirt on me gilded, which would cause his death, but also want to sell him this disc, you know, mm-hmm. unless he was unless he sort of like the whole double cross thing where like he's originally put out there to, you know, deliver this thing. But now he realizes how much value it is. He's like, oh, I need more money for this. Or Mason's trying to. Yeah. Or Mason's trying to show him. Yeah, you're probably or Mason's trying to show him. I'm such a good blackmailer. Look at all the dirt I found on you. Hey, I'm a really good criminal. Buy this from me. And keep in mind that there's only that uh, Benedict expects more than one disc. Mason only had, uh, presumably, there was only one in the coat. He might have brought a sample of the goods and not all the goods. Ah. And it's also possible that this is entirely a red herring because, uh, like, we had the, the Garadub uh, the family. Mm. And yeah. the Garrida, that was also a, a home story, which like it did not have anything to do with with the the actual characters in the game. So it could just be a reference, like for funsies, so that people who know the stories can go ah, point at the television screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> 
Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, did you know? You know, uh, also too, Van Zeke's act- uh, actually did a Sherlock Holmes reference himself when he mentioned eliminating the impossible and whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. I don't think he does the whole line. And I was says, I was says, I, I wrote that line for for Holmes. Yeah, she gets indignant. <laughs> oh, um, I have a prediction, and uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but I think it's a good bet. Which is that this the game will pretty much end on a in trial course correction with Holmes. You know what I mean? Like he's gonna mm. do some like dramatic like we're about to find Gina guilty or something like that. But then Holmes bursts in, comes in with his explanation, which implicates maybe ben- maybe Benedict or maybe McGilded. I think one thing I'm a little concerned about is I'm getting that like that. Uh oh, wait a minute. They're not going to make it kind of thing. Meaning, like, I don't know if they have time to resolve all the plot threads that they're opening. Yeah. You know? Absolutely don't. Like, we never found out about the woman in case one. And maybe somehow we will, but she'd have to come kind of out of nowhere at this point, right? Yeah. I, I think that's why we we consider the second game to be part of just more of the same game. I, there's no way mm-hmm. we're going to pick up all of the loose threads throughout the entire game. Look, we don't, we don't have the woman, we don't have the fop. We don't have the man with the giant chin. We, we can talk about this a little bit more, like next next week. But but yeah, they they absolutely do not resolve. Uh, this this is the anime berserk. Okay, no, I, I'm just kidding. It's not that at all. Oh god, but, um, I was gonna be like, you mean horrible? <laughs> well, the first one that was like kind of good, but then they never introduced Skull Knight, so it ends on the eclipse, and there's no way they can actually continue the story. Because the character is not there to continue it, so it just ends. That killed me. That's the worst cliffhanger. I was up in episode 24, and I'm like watching, like, what the heck can they even do with the story now? Where's part 25? What do you mean there's not one? You know? And then we have the new anime, which is crappy for a different reason, but whatever, you know? Uh, R.I.P. Mira. Um, but anyway, so. All right, so next time we're finishing finishing the game, right? That's mm-hmm. the yep. first one. That's all we do. Mm-hmm. It should be thrilling. What? Yeah. What? What's the credits? They have the usual thing where they like show you um, stuff. Squid Game. Hmm? <laughs> no. no they, 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 they usually but, like um, have like cuts to different characters, like um, callbacks to different yeah. characters in the ending credits. Nice. Like yeah. they do in all the Ace Attorney games. I don't remember if there's a post credit sequence or not, but there might be one. We've heard the new cornered, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah, yeah. There's never going to be another cornered. Let's be honest. <laughs> but anyway, um, cool. All right, folks. We'll see you next time. And when the game is afoot for the last time, until the next so time. To speak. <laughs> when until we the next. All right. Yeah. Well, the game technically. Yes. Yes. Like, but yes. All right. Later.